What's up guys, this is Alex with Tailwater Fly Shop. Today I got a one material fly for you, and it is the Red Ned. All right, so the hook we're using today is the uh, Umqua. They're all purpose hook and a size four. Okay, uh, and uh, thread, we're just using Danville's 210. So before you guys were like, oh, that's not really a one material fly because you put glue on it and glue counts as a material and you put thread on it because thread counts as a material. Okay, uh, this is a one material, okay? So I'm not, I don't, eyes aren't a material, okay? Uh, yeah, so you guys are still gonna put in the comments, oh, it's not really, it's clickbait, it's not really one material. No, it is one material, okay? Monofilament weed guard does not count as a material, okay? I'm talking about like, I'm only using this one package material to tie this fly, okay? So, uh, the first thing I'm gonna tie in is the eye, okay? Yes, why am I saying eye singular? Well, because I'm tying in an eye, okay? Not a pair of dumbbell eyes or anything like that. So, I'm gonna tie in uh, the Umqua Jig Bomb, okay? The tungsten bead, this is the three millimeter, uh, and it is in gold, okay? The three millimeter tungsten bead, Adam just told me to tell you that all the stuff's gonna be linked in the description down below. But I'm not gonna call them materials because this is a one material fly. So the one material will be linked in the description down below. The other things, okay, like the eye and the hook and the thread that that are not materials, those will be linked as well. So I'm gonna tie in a piece of 20 pound hard mono, okay? You can use the real hard mono, you can use Mason hard mono, you can use whatever you'd like. And I'm gonna tie it in facing backwards and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my jig bomb through it, okay? You know, some people say it makes a difference which way you tie it in. Even some people that work here do, but I don't think it makes a difference. So uh, I'm gonna tie the jig bomb in. The biggest thing about this fly, okay? Being a Ned Rig fly, what I want this fly to do is I want it to stand straight up. So, I'm gonna tie this jig bomb in as close to the eye of the hook as I can. Now, Alex, why aren't you using a jig hook? Well, uh, because I don't like jig hooks for this pattern, because I want, I don't wanna block the, I don't really wanna block the, um, uh, the hook gap with that. So, that's, that's why I'm not using a, a jig hook. But I am using a jig bomb, and, and I promise, even though the eye is straight, uh, this fly literally stands straight up when you fish it. So um, you want to use the three millimeter tungsten, I think, for this. I don't think that the uh, the smaller ones are um, are heavy enough to get this this thing to strand straight up. So that's that's where we're at right now. So the eye, not a material. The eye is is tied in. So uh, now we're going to tie in our next thing that's not a material. All right, uh, and that's going to be another piece of hard mono, okay? So I had a piece that I straightened out, here it is. Uh, and this is the, just anything hard mono, okay? I want it to be stiff. This is 50 pound, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie this in almost like you would a tail, all right? And uh, I flattened out the one end a little bit of it and just put some bite marks in it uh, with my pliers, but I'm gonna tie this in and I want it to stand straight out the back of the fly, okay? So I straighten that piece out, tying it in, all right? And then to really make sure that that mono stays in place, I'm going to use my Zappa Gap with a brush because I like the brush and really give it a good, uh, a good amount. So uh, you can wrap your thread back over that. So a Ned Rig fly. So if you look at a general Ned Rig, okay, whether it's for freshwater or saltwater, the saltwater Ned Rigs are becoming more and more popular, especially for uh, species like redfish. But uh, I kind of was thinking like, hey, I think this should work for in, as a fly too. And, uh, and it does work. I've actually um, caught a few fish on it and uh, haven't been fishing it for that long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie this single material in, okay? What is that single material you're asking? It's ice dub chenille and brown, all right? So I tied it in right behind the eye, 
okay? And this is the only material, okay? That's not like a hook or thread or an eye, okay? That I'm gonna be tying onto this hook, all right? I'm gonna tie it in, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start uh, wrapping uh, this, this material, okay? And so when I wrap this material, basically uh, I'm gonna show you kind of how I do this and make this into a, a Ned a Ned rig fly. So I'm gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. All right. So now here's where it turns into a Ned rig. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna wrap it around the 50 pound mono. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my super glue. And I'm going to coat the mono with it. All right, make sure you use mono that's stiff enough. Okay, don't try and do this with like 20 or 30. This is 50 hard mono, so it's really, it's really hard. But I'm going to wrap it around the mono. And I have this mono tied in longer than I'm actually going to use it, but I'd always rather have too much than too little. So wrap it around there. Then I'm gonna wrap back. I really want this fly to only be about two and a half, maybe three inches max, but I'm gonna wrap it back over itself to give it a little bit more body. I've never thrown this at, at bass, like up north or anything. I don't know why it wouldn't work for any other situation that a Ned rig would, but um, you know, hey, maybe we're Maybe we're onto something here, or maybe this is a catastrophic failure and it's never gonna work again or catch a fish again. I don't know, I've caught some redfish here with it and I think that it has its place. So um, now I'm gonna wrap this back all the way towards the front of the hook. And now I'm gonna tie our single material off behind the eye. Hook slipped a little bit. All right, so all right, so now I got this uh, material wrapped onto here. It's super glued down. It's a pretty small little profile, but again, for the Tampa Bay redfish around here, uh, I really like it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take little bit more super glue and right at the end where I kind of started wrapping back I'm gonna kind of coat the mono and the material so it really bonds and it doesn't come unraveled at all and then with my little wire cutters I'm gonna cut this mono it's okay if you cut it a little bit longer than the tail um, it's not really a big deal you can cut a flush once it dries but now I'm going to flip this fly over, and I'm going to tie in uh, the weed guard. So I didn't leave a ton of room just because, like I said, that mono uh, or that tungsten eye I wanted right up at the front. But now um, what it's going to do is I'm going to flatten this mono out just a little bit with my teeth, just give myself like a little tab, and then tie it in. So the nice thing about this hook, okay, this Umqua hook, is it does have an over, even though it's a size 4, it has a pretty oversized eye. So I'm going to wrap that in, get it to lay back, put it forward, wrap behind the weed guard to stand it up, cut it to length, but finish behind the Weed guard. Lather it up with super glue. And I got a little bit aggressive with my thread wraps. So I'm gonna take another hook really quick and just uh, clean out the eye here. Just push the thread wraps back a little bit. I mean, any pound tester fish or redfish force is gonna go through that. So 
This is your finished uh, red net, okay? It's one material, it's super simple. You can tie it in a bunch of different colors. And this fly is going to ride literally like this, okay? Um, and now that the super glue is dry, let me uh, just pretty it up. That mono doesn't really matter. But I mean, this fly is gonna ride exactly like this. It's stiff, just like you want like a Ned rig to be, okay? You don't want a bunch of movement, okay? You're just, I mean, they're eating a stick and that's kind of the way that you want it. So uh, this fly is super effective in really clear water if the fish are pretty spooky, but you can see it's got a little bit of flash to it. So you can see this is exactly how the fly is going to ride in the water. So it's, uh, it's going to be really nice for, you know, clear water redfish flies. And I just did something, one of my pet peeves, I tied the weed, clipped the weed guard in too long. But uh, it's going to literally ride like exactly, exactly like it. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, yeah. I mean, can you guys see how freaking perfect that is? I mean, look at this. I don't know how much purple you can get. But, I mean... It's a Ned Rig, man, uh, and it's one material and uh, kind of a newish technique, I guess. I don't know if I'm the one that invented the technique. I doubt it. There's not many people inventing new things in the fly tying world anymore, but I really like this ice dub chenille for it. You guys can make this fly even a little bit um, narrower of a profile if you wanted to use something like a, um, you know, like a, like a real thin, uh, like a rope material almost or like an ultra chenille something that's something that's really fine or if you wanted to use something like root beer uh, cactus chenille you could make it bigger and buggier but this is the redneg redneg this is the red ned and it is a one material fly so guys like the video subscribe to the channel uh, the links to the things and the single material that used are will be in the description down below uh, and as always Go tie some red neds up and let me know what you think.